In the pursuit of greatness, we are asked to give our lives away, to relinquish our time, our energy, and our bodies, all to reach the top of our chosen field, to become the greatest to have ever lived, to become a champion. I waited four fucking years for this day. In Dota 2, that pinnacle is the international, the biggest esports tournament on the planet. It all comes down to this. Turns it around, grab it as well, stolen by Danny. Why are you kidding me? This is the story of teams risking it all for greatness. The story of people laying everything on the line for the privilege of hoisting the ever-elusive Aegis of Champions in front of thousands of fans. This is the story of the International. The International may be the biggest tournament in esports today, but its beginnings were humble. In August of 2011, Valve hosted the first ever TI at Gamescom in Cologne as a coming out party for Dota 2, the sequel to popular Warcraft 3 mod Defense of the Ancients. But the game, which was still in beta at the time, did not make a great first impression with the diehards. And at first, players were reluctant to move to an updated version of a game that they had poured their hearts and souls into. Maybe one guy liked this, I thought it was pretty cool, but everybody was just like, what the fuck is this? The initial reaction, not just for myself, it was just like, this, this is in Dota. On top of grappling with an unfinished buggy game, the players didn't receive beta keys until a couple weeks out from the event. An event that boasted the largest cash prize esports had ever seen. Despite the bugs, how alien the game felt for everyone involved, and many players showing up with a relaxed attitude, one team, Nares Vincer showed up to win. We were so confident. I remember we were so confident that we were going to win because I joined the game and I feel so free. Dendi was the face of Navi, and the Ukrainian mid laner more or less wrote the book on proactive mid play, seizing any opportunity to change a game. And it was that aggressive approach that helped Navi breathe through the event. Eventually, Navi would face Chinese powerhouse Ehome in the grand finals. And although the Chinese team would take a game off the Ukrainians, a feat no other team managed throughout the tournament, Navi would prevail. They are running forward to one million dollars. <laughs> and they will probably get it. But this clash between Europe and China would not be an isolated one. In fact, it would set the tone for Dota 2 and the International for years to come. By the time TI2 rolled around, Dota 2 had a full year of play under its belt, and the game had taken off in a big way, resulting in the International being moved to the Benaroya Hall in Seattle, Washington. But the storyline of TI2 centered around Na'Vi and whether China, the dominant region in the competitive circuit, had truly closed the gap, enough to dethrone the defending European champion. And during the group stage, that appeared to be the case. As Navi dropped more games than LGD Gaming, Invictus Gaming, and Team DK combined. But in the second round of the upper bracket, Navi ran into Group B winners Invictus Gaming. Despite having the odds stacked against them, Navi reminded everyone why they had been TI champions by producing one of the greatest plays in Dota 2 history, simply known as the play. They storm up the river. Patience from Zo, waiting in the wake. Navi is about to be caught. Oh, there's the sleep, the surge. He catches everyone. Oh, this could be a total disaster. Vacuum in. Ravage on everyone. The black hole as well. Light of heaven turns it around. Ravage as well. Stolen by Danny. Why are you kidding me? They turn it around. Four heroes dead. Four Five nine, heroes geez. dead. Chuan trying to survive. Chuan's going to go down. Puppy talked about the Naga counter. It's Light of Heaven with his BKB. They turn it around. I don't even know how they're going to do it. Standing ovation from the crowd. After sending Invictus Gaming down to the lower bracket, Navi then managed to upset an undefeated LGD Gaming in the upper bracket finals, punching their ticket to yet another international grand final. But Navi, for the third time in a row, take down one of these top Chinese teams after losing game one. They are 
proving to be the champions they were last year. There, they would rematch Invictus Gaming, who had valiantly clawed their way out of a stacked lower bracket. With $1 million and regional pride on the line, Europe and China clashed again. But this time, Na'Vi was in over their head. Where's that silence? Havos splits with the images, but too much damage! It's too much damage! Havos takes the ball, immediate buyback, but it might be too late. It looks like Puppy gonna go down. Split Earth connects again. The support's doing big work. Diving, diving. Ferrari, he's overextended. Slowed down. Havos, silence! Dies again! Queen of Pain off far, fires out. Dendi dropping low, Faith dropping low. Havos falls to death. Does he abide that? Black hole on Puppy. They catch him. There will be no steal. The GG's come out. And IG take it. Tron, a big celebration for him. He jumps out of the seat again. He's trying to fight everybody out. Havos right clicking away, but he can't take everybody. Tron's low, but Navi players are dying. Three's dead. GG's called. GG is called. IG is your champion for International 2. China had exacted revenge for its previous TI defeat, and now the rest of the world would have to wait another year to knock them off their perch. With the tremendous success of TI2, the stakes for the International 3 had to be raised, and Valve's introduction of the Compendium in 2013 did just that. Now a TI staple, the Compendium allows Dota 2 players to help support the International. As an incentive to buy it, Valve implemented a tiered reward system that gave players in-game cosmetics each time a crowdfunding goal blew up and pledged to donate 25% of the money they received from Compendium purchases toward TI's prize pool. And looking back, its release might be one of the most significant moments in not just the history of Dota, but all of esports. From the get-go, the Compendium was a hit, boosting TI3's prize pool by more than $1.2 million, for a grand total of $2.87 million. With the largest cash prize in esports history on the line, it was up to the team to deliver the entertainment. And did they ever. Four staff tries to get into safety, does not have care of a shackle shot, almost perfect. Was perfect, but the impale caught everyone as well. Kuro now with the carapace, counter initiation. Down goes the wall, that's just Havos chopping wood on the Nana though. Gets the kill, now he's gonna have to go to work on King J. Here comes Dendi, vacuum into the wall once again, he's dismembering. Move, going to town on him, Havos makes it a double kill. Now we're gonna get another one. Navi, charging back out at King J. We'll make it a full five man wipe! You gotta be careful, Blink BKB Black Hole's back up again. RP and they're very online. badly grouped right RP. now. There's a jump in up here on all of them! Skewer them up, Blink BKB, where is oh it? There's nothing, God. it's a double kill for Ohio! Super will go down, triple kill for Ohio! And QQQ is on the rubber bush, he says no! Double kill! We have RP in 20 seconds. Will there be 20 more seconds? I'm not sure. Siler going for DC. They don't get DC, but look Bro, at Laura. Slow. He's Bro, it's almost Bro. dead. Not yet. Siler to fall. Liquid are doing it. They're gonna take it. Team and Liquid. Lady China are going Oh home. my god. And Bulba is on his feet. Can you feel it? I can feel it. A year after the Chinese Dota scene flexed their strength, the region dominated TI3's bracket stage. And while Nautis Vincere were in the running to make their third consecutive TI Grand Final, there was another European team making waves on Dota's biggest stage, Alliance. Bernie Bobbeck, triple kill for Bulldog, absolutely crushing performance, and DK will tap out, and the Alliance are guaranteed a top three finish at the International Three. You can take a game off them, but good luck to Making a series. A holy Swedish roster that featured the likes of Loda, S4, and Admiral Bulldog. Alliance were one of the hottest teams coming into TI3, and were in the midst of one of the most impressive seasons in Dota 2 history. Having gone undefeated in the group stage, Alliance faced off against Na'Vi in the upper bracket, and swept them down to the lower bracket. There it is. Once there, Na'Vi would face Orange Esports, who had just upset both DK and Tong Fu in back-to-back -back series. During Game 3, Orange was on the brink of upsetting Na'Vi as well, until KYXY committed one of the costliest mistakes in Dota 2 history. The deny. Continue to farm up and then just deal with this Aegis when it comes out. Should be on the hands of Mushi, and in fact goes to the hands of Windrunner. Yeah, no. Denial. Den what? They denied it. They failed. Oh! Oh! And we see a lot of rares being given out for witnessing. 
the oh. denial of an Aegis. That's not really what you want to do, KYXY. In a now infamous momentum shifting misplay that remains hard to watch, the Malaysian carry denied his team both the Aegis of the Immortal and ultimately a grand finals birth. Bushy did. Now Denny with a stun. Koro with a stun. Back, back in again. And Poppy! Three on the hole for the feed script. Cancels it off. Then drives stop. Then to bumping his free again. Meg Chan keeps him alive. Orange lost two. Orange lost three. Orange has lost four. And the gal lose five. And he get a phase shift. And five then with the Shiva's gun, they're going to jump in. Koro! Big stun. Double stun. Feed script cancel. Black hole. Won't go. He actually gets two. KYXY no higher. Locked in position. A force with a double kill. Mushy almost dead. Is dead. Mushy down. SK will buy back. And GG! Na'Vi! They come back from what looked like oblivion to get into their third international grand final. Orange's disastrous exit paved the way for TI's first ever all-European grand final and a rematch between Na'Vi and Alliance in what is widely considered to be the most memorable grand final series TI has ever seen. Creating another base of attack, now a call down to fly, they've lasso Bulldog, he's still alive though, he's not even dying, three dead, no track kills for Na'Vi and they're not gonna get any, make it four, Na'Vi down 2-11 to 11, and they're gonna GG! Oh my god! GG! 16 minute GG and they're gonna get that final last kill. Alliance just dominating. They want Bulldog. Bulldog chasing in. Yeah, Alliance, Bulldog. they just can't stand against this level of damage. Puppy's still hunting. Stun on Ake. They don't even need the black hole. It's a route. It's a retreat to the fountain. They'll find S4. S4's dead in a matter of seconds. Four to fall. They're farming Alliance in their own base. This is the most one-sided game that the Alliance has lost in this entire tournament. In comes S4. He's found Funnick. In comes the Hobos as well. Disarm against the bear. He's not doing anything. Funnick survived the initiation. Hobos the says, bear. I want the, the bear. bear. I want your Aegis. Thank you very much. The Defying Rapier is now on Funnick, and Na'Vi are gonna cut Alliance's head off down the middle lane. GG! Now oh, Hobos, Hobos backstab on Bulldog! He's gonna drop! On to Funnick, last way to Bloda, but Loda is still alive. He's still got a Satanic. Hobos is hexed, and Hobos will fall! Loda still got BKB, Bulldog will fall though. I think, no, Lo, he's so not alive. dead yet! Oh. Abos buy back into death again, and S4, he's gonna chase. The other dead, Alliance, the Swedish monsters, they force a game five! After trading games back and forth, with unique drafts, role swapping, and heart-wrenching plays, the International had its first ever five-game grand finals. It all comes down to this. One more game, two million dollars on the table, winner! First place at the International, the Aegis, and the prestige of being the best Dota 2 team in the world. And in the end, the thrilling final game was all but decided by S4 and a pair of legendary Dream Coils. But they've lifted S4, he just bought back. If he dies, that could be game. Blinks away, they take the rest. all TP, TP quick right now. S4 is gonna try to cancel as many as possible. He'll cancel three, my god. Funnick's gonna try to TP, but he's gonna defend against everybody. Meanwhile, Loda. Working on the melee rocks on the bot, reality rip. Oh, Funnick, you are getting stopped hard. He's gonna get back out, but the rack's in huge trouble. They will defend. Alliance will defend. out maneuvering Navi. Oh, cancel TP. He's out. Oh, he canceled the beat to B. Puppy, he's not gonna be back in the base. He's got BKB, but no boots of travel. Oh, cancel Stanley's TP as well. They are in now huge in the trouble. Funnick's caught. Now, if they go for the throne, it could be game. Funnick's down. Alliance are doing it. They need a little more for those to fall. Throw in jeopardy. There's a glyph. It could be their last stand. Dendy's back. He's going to try to focus everybody, but there's so much stuff. The hitting on the throne. There's no more glyph available. Down to about half HP. A quarter HP. Alliance surrounding from all sides. BKB. They want to do it. They're going to do it. The million dollar dream coils etched S4's name into Dota 2's pantheon, 
cemented Alliance as the undisputed best team in the world and provided an incredible conclusion to what remains the most exhilarating grand finals the international has ever seen. Prior to the beginning of the International Four, Valve and Dota fans started to get a taste of what the compendium was capable of. By the time the tournament was about to begin, the community had raised over $9 million to contribute to the prize pool, making TI4's 10.92 million the largest prize pool in esports history. The format for the event had also changed, with the top two teams being awarded buys ahead of the semifinals in an attempt to make the group stage feel more significant. With that said, the International Four wasn't exactly the most memorable TI, and one of the reasons for that was the Death Ball meta, which strongly rewarded teams that executed aggressive early game tactics. Before the Death Ball strategy's discovery, the group stage had been pretty exciting as teams tried to navigate their way through the new game build. But once Vici Gaming and Evil Geniuses uncovered it, all other battle plans were rendered obsolete. Games during the elimination phase of the event were very one-sided, and it often felt like whichever team was able to secure the lead early on would snowball and win, with little potential for comebacks. And it was, in a large part, thanks to the Death Ball meta that North America would get to see its first deep run at an international title, with Evil Geniuses looking like the best non-Chinese team in the world. Eyes, 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 it's trapped outside, MMY, he tries to go on Universe, but he just gets obliterated, three heroes down, the top ranks will go as well, and that's GG, EG are through the winner's bracket final. But the North American TI dream would be short-lived, as EG stumbled over Newbie in the upper bracket and then Vichy Gaming in the lower bracket finals, resulting in TI's first ever all-Chinese grand final. And it went down as one of the most anticlimactic grand finals of all time, with Newbie perfectly implementing the Death Ball strategy to easily dispatch their compatriots. Now Hal will make you move, but a searing change! RTK goes down and White's burning as well! It's the immolation, Xiao Wei, he's still not dead, the last attack from the engine apparition will get the kill, but Hal, he's staring down the barrel of another kill, oh. the shock on Zyla, there's your slider fist, double kill for Hal! Nubia are off to a fantastic start here in game number four. The Plague Wars being prepped up, Super, he's trying to actually hunt Banana, being picked up, throwing down, he's got a time lapse, time, time lapse, time lapse, yes. he gets it off, Shikuchi out, but the Sentry Ward's still there, they can see him, he has to use his one charges, he's so low on life, no Shikuchi, he goes down as well. There's two Plague Wars, GG, 15 minutes in, it's over, Nubi convincingly moving their way through the win. They look shaky in game number one, but they prove why they are the champions of the international. While TI4 may have been tainted by its uninspired meta and lackluster finale, its record-breaking prize pool raised mainstream awareness of the event and the level of prestige associated with it. After the mixed reaction at TI4, Valve decided to return to the conventional group and bracket stage formats of previous TIs, and that decision, combined with a less restrictive meta, would lead TI5 to being considered one of the most competitive in the tournament's history. Heading into the event, Evil Geniuses were riding high after their deep run the previous year, and since adding a 15-year-old pub star named Sumail in January, the team had emerged as one of the non-Chinese favorites to win the event. While the group stage was strongly contested, the bracket phase was still largely dominated by the Chinese teams, and even EG would find themselves falling down to the lower bracket at the hands of CDEC. The ball, the good play as well. Razor dropping low. We'll get the mech off. The wall's been dropped, but it doesn't matter. Fear's gonna go down. The universe is gonna look to surge himself away, but aggressive and Q2. Asian and down with the diffusal blade. Tony White comes out, but it doesn't matter. Universe to fall. PPT just having to get himself out of there with some mail. The track on Sismail, they're going to continue to chase this down. They've got the vision on the BBD here with the track out as well. BBD in trouble! They'll get themselves a fourth kill! Sismail, the only last man standing there for each... Is that it? That's it! 20 minutes in, CDEC! They're, they're into the grand finals! They've done it! After their loss to CDEC, EG was staring down elimination and their last chance at making Grand Finals relied on overcoming another giant of Chinese Dota in LGD Gaming. And they did. They look for more EG, fighting the rhythm. The can of the Xiao Wei Hour. Xiao Wei almost dead. There's the chance out of the Silva. Not enough. Zumail gets the kill. And now he looks to get out. BKB again forced the old man. Punishing Sila. Breaking in. Zumail going hard to the pain. He wants Sila. He gets him again. This hunt just never ends. LGD getting wiped out. No time to think about it. MMY getting nuked to smithereens. Sumail 
and Universe almost killing him off. He frantically retreats. He will survive for now. Universe has been fishing for a hook, but he doesn't need the kill. They got their ass, and now he's gonna get him anyway. And the boy's dead, and EG will move on to the grand finals of the International. For the second time in the International's history, a grand final would be decided in an upper bracket final rematch. All that stood between EG and NA's first TI Championship was the imperious CDEC. After taking two of the first three games, EG looked to carry their momentum into the fourth. And nearly 30 minutes into that game, Evil Geniuses emphatically slammed the door shut on CDEC and China's hopes of claiming another TI title. I don't think EG are interested in contesting this 4-on-5, but maybe they could delay it long enough for it to be a 5-on-5 if they Ice Blast and Fissure properly. There is uh, no hook shot. They're all together. PPD, here comes the Ice Blast, ready for the dunk! Oh! Off the back of the $6 million Echo Slam, perhaps the most iconic Dota 2 play in recent memory, Evil Geniuses closed out the match. Aggressive and Soul Survivor, CDEC, it looks troublesome, it looks really, really bad for them. Aggressive on the run, Universe runs behind him, they keep running out, but GG will play! EG are your TI5 champions! Universe, Aoi 2000, Fear, PPD, and Sumail had done it. They had finally given NA its first ever TI Championship, and they did so in the most spectacular fashion. By now you may have noticed a trend within the International. Every other year, China brings home the title. That meant that when it was time for the International in 2016, and it's more than $20 million prize pool, all eyes were on Dota's most decorated region. But standing in China's way were defending champs evil geniuses, who looked primed to make another run at the Aegis. After the dust settled and the brackets were set, things looked just about how you'd expect, including EG. And in their second round upper bracket clash against E-Home, Evil Geniuses treated Dota 2 fans to one of the greatest comebacks of all time. Finding themselves 20,000 gold down after the 40 minute mark, and with E-Home securing Mega Creeps 30 minutes later, Evil Geniuses dug in and fought desperately for their tournament lives. He's gonna get blown up inside the corner sphere. He's down and out, Evil Geniuses still five up, but here comes Ed on these slash, bouncing around with the Shattered Demon, hoping to be able to go on his eye, but an arrow! Oh my god! But he still managed to get himself away in the back lights. The Universe, spaceless void though in the back. He's now gonna go for all chicken and He may be activated. And now he's gonna run himself away. Universe says these back lights. Like, he's he's dead as well. EG might be able to do this. Evil Genius is their whole thing. Oh my god, he hope they know. They know chicken going for the whole play of chicken. He's back at the side of the radiant space. He's already taken down one of the tier fours. And he's trying to get PPD, but Evil Genius is cool, calm, and collected. They're holding it to Vent here again. If they kill him, they're going to be able to get the ice box in. No! E Five down! They know this is the end game scenario. 60 seconds without this jug. E Home, can they hold EG? Confident they can. Smear's coming up as well. The tier four is being beaten on. It begins the jump four. Samal, hard to go on the rear. No chaotic offering. An ice box to Jagan. EG did what nobody had ever done before at a TI, coming back from Mega Creeps to keep their hopes of back-to-back -back titles alive. But despite their tremendous performance, NA's defending champions bowed out of TI6 at the hands of China's Wings Gaming and another NA team in the lower bracket, Digital Chaos. Oh, he wants more, but they're building an army mod. These illusions turned against EG. They don't have Cleave. They can't clear this, I don't think. They do have Ravage soon. 15 seconds, but so many ways to deal with it. The tier meanwhile, fours, they're falling. Weeha sneaking around. Tier 4 is down. Digital Chaos pulling it out. Can EG answer? It's all on Uni now. The Glyph is down. Universe, Ravage, PKP perfectly for Resolution. And Weeha straight for the jugular onto the throne, but they stop Rezo. They hold for now. Fear's coming out with the Vengeance. Throne, low.
completed their journey. A team that didn't, had a, had a captain that didn't even want a captain. Players who are booted after winning Shanghai. After losing to Wings earlier in the upper bracket, DC ran a gauntlet of tough opposition to earn their shot at redemption in the grand finals. This is the only team who could handle the lower bracket, and I don't know how they did it, and they deserve so much credit, and I think <laughs> they've just got to do it now. You can't have this journey and not win. Once again, the largest prize pool in esports history would be decided between North America and China. And while Digital Chaos fought courageously, Wings would not be denied. To go out through the back lines and attack, now the last two, they found Tosca, we are ripped apart, the buybacks, it won't be enough, for game of play, Wings are your international 2016 champions! Once again, China raised the ages of champions at the expense of NA and the rest of the world's shattered TI dreams. The International is a tournament that is defined just as much by heartbreak as it is by historic victories and crazy plays. And no one embodied that heartbreak heading into TI7 more than Kuroki. He was always a celebrated name, but one haunted by a series of crushing disappointments. That trend of falling short looked to continue in 2017, when Liquid were eliminated from the upper bracket in the first round. Liquid are down, they're now a corpse that's being punched, kicked, and about to be put six feet under. IG have the buybacks if they need them. They've got the damage. They've got the control. The position is theirs. The game is theirs. The series is theirs. And top six is theirs. Wow. All eyes were on a liquid who were once favored to win the tournament, but now had one of the longest roads to make it to the grand finals. And under Kuroki's leadership, they rally. The drop. Still they fight on, 4v5, last press for Secret as they charge in. They want that troll, they bash him back, control him all they can. Already another dual one, mid one's down. It's over for Secret. Jeez. Megas, jump four from Miracle, looking for Maposhka, he gets the glimpse back, but he's already gone. Maposhka down for 40. Roger, corrosive hazed up as well, but Timmerman man chases him. Resolution moving in, but GG, good luck next is called by Empire. But it's only gonna last a little bit longer. They have the damage output, they move forward. Where's the stun? Where's the control? Like it, now on for a shapeshift. Runs forward, remember he's got the cheese. The BTs, they're coming in. The ancient is exposed for the moment. TF's RG doing the work. The cheese have atonement, looking for the killer to no one. That's the one they have to get. The fortress is still fortified. No one will fall down. Buybacks have to be committed. You've still got another 3k life on that agent as Miracle. They're holding, they're holding, they're doing it. Aranthes, he's gone as well. Solo, oh my lord. No one's BKB trying to protect him, but this could be the dieback. This could be the huge moment. If Bloodstick had died right now, it could be over. Four heroes lost from Bonus Pro. They thought they had it. And yeah, yeah, 103 minutes. Team Liquid. Team Liquid from all sides be standing upon Virtus Pro. The tier three tower in the mid will now fall. Where is the defense? You don't have Chrono, RP, Sonic Wave. AA will be back up in a second, but GG well played. After getting the best of Virtus Pro in an insane series, Liquid completed their unbelievable run back to grand finals by toppling LGD Gaming and then LGD Forever Young in the lower bracket finals. Does not want to miss the buyback. He marches in one foot in front of the other, but now he does get lassoed. Silence up as well, he's, he's got, got Aegis. Aegis. He's got the BKB, they love a clean He's got Thunder too. Thunder being countered out here, it looks like at least for now. Miracle though, gets oh, it off and still chasing forward. He can't die Thunder. here. Commitment, he's so deep, he's so damn deep. Morphling fights back, they force out the buyback. Morphling goes in, Superman mode. Can he hold the base? Uh -oh. Miracle's in on his own, he needs a little help. He's gonna need it soon. GH coming from behind, they lock him down. Can they kill him once? The base is crumbling. Profit. Death by a thousand cuts. Going for the tier four mind control, popping that BKB. He's down to half, can they actually kill him? But no, he's gonna be this. fine. He's still fighting this. Miracle is fighting this. GG. So does Key Arena. They are going to the grand final. And in grand finals, Liquid had just one dangerous obstacle between their captain and his dream, Newbie. But the upper bracket winners were simply no match. They're not committing too heavily in with the Venomans. Remember, he has that BKB. It's a reaction time, what's all about. Miracle, the bar from Kaka. It'll connect, follow up, Fisher, but KP. He'll get the sun up the mass side force in the middle of the field. Dante, coded off the Miracle, the anchor is left there from GH on the only side. And damage out for Turpin with the side. SCC is gone for two minutes. The Lich Chamber's bouncing back down. Kaka 
trying to hide himself, but right now it's all liquid, liquid, liquid. They have taken down four. He'll get the five back from the Venom as a GH for the four up. He won't even die for this. Liquid lose nothing, but take everything from Mubi. Up they come once more. No hex, no mids inside the Babel. Only Slash on top of Mubi. The Shrines are doing enough, but it is all a miracle Joe. Double kill for him. The Fuse of Wedge, NCCC, Lost Centaur, control of the back lines. The Exorcism, it needs to do some damage, but right now, Mubi dropping like flies. And GG, it's done. Liquid will be the first team in the history of the International to whitewash the grand final. After years of dedication, years of painful disappointment, Kuroki's sacrifice was finally rewarded. The biggest stage, the most money, and fans from all over the world screaming as you compete for the Aegis of Champions. The International is the shining star atop esports. TI is it. It's do or die, make or break. When you retire from the game, your whole career will be defined by how you perform at this event that takes place only once a year. As other esports have grown and spread their roots into corporate sponsorships and gained big investments through franchise systems, Dota has stood still. It is the last remaining relic of the grind, relinquishing your life to a game to realize its greatest reward or to come up short. TI is so enthralling that it defines an entire game. It breaks records and it breaks hearts. There's no doubt that this pinnacle of gaming immortality offers a precarious means to defining your career by. But every year, they come. And every year, dozens of stories are written into this event's illustrious history. Because some things are worth giving it your all for. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.